Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today's project is a very simple little task. Uh, got a job coming up. Hopefully, it'll work out. That on that, I'm going to need a an air manifold, a three-way air manifold. But I don't want a round one. Uh, that kind of kicks out to the side, like you see, uh, readily available in the hardware stores and that kind of thing. I need something that's basically three in a row. So I've got this piece of one inch stock here, uh, one inch by one inch. It's a little over seven inches long. I'm going to lay out one in the center and then one about an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter in from each end. The only tricky part about this, and it's really not tricky, my drill bit is not long enough to reach all the way through. I will have the feed in this end down here, uh, in one end or the other, but uh, drill bit is not long enough to reach all the way through, so I'll be drilling from each end. Uh, but I'm going to get this laid out and set up on the mill, and I'll see you over there. All right, I'm over here at the mill now, and this little task is going to pretty much max out the capability of this mill. Uh, I've gotten the head run just as high as it uh, should go. As a matter of fact, I moved my limit switch out of the way and moved it up about a half inch higher than, uh, than I had my limit switch set on. Uh, I'm not going to be able to drill since my quill on here has a three inch travel and this piece is just a little over seven inches. I'm not going to be able to reach halfway uh, without being a little creative. So what I'll do is uh, once we get it centered up and get it vertical on here, I'll drill as far as I can with the bit, brand new bit this morning, uh, 7 sixteenths for a uh, quarter uh, NPT thread. But I'll drill as far as I can, as far as I can reach, and then I, and clear out the chips, and then I'll move down, uh, drop the uh, drill in the chuck a little bit. Of course, that means I won't be able to clear all the chips, but uh, I shouldn't have to go much more than about a half inch without clearing the, the chips. But I'm going to get it locked down in there. I've got a I've got a parallel underneath it, uh, so let me tap down. Be sure it's sitting down tight on the on that parallel. And to be sure everything is plumb in this direction, I'm just going to set a one, two, three block there and check it, and that's fine there. Now, I'll check over here. I had squared off the end, so I knew it should be setting pretty close. All right. I have the front of it, I'm not sure you can see it on the camera, but I have just a ink mark on the front of it here so that when I flip it, I'm going to keep that to the front. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I want to do is set my little uh, clamp on the vice jaws so that once I've found center, I can just bump into that again and replumb. And this is one inch stock, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, measure both sides anyhow, since I've got a drill from both ends. All right, that was a repeat. So I'll go Y, one half. And there is my Y axis. I 
I always wanted to be sure you didn't leave any burrs on the, on the edge when you're doing this. Kind of negates uh, doing all this precision work to find the center if you've got a 10,000th burr hanging off the side. All right, X and Y is locked down now. And I will go ahead and start, run a center drill in that. And the bit is bottomed out in the uh, chuck right now, so it's gonna be, gonna be tight, height wise. That is the extent of my quill. Three inch quill on these, uh, on, on this mill. So, with all the chips cleaned out, I'm gonna drop that down to where I feel like it's still got good reasonable amount in there. And I would love to, to get at least another half inch from where I'm at now. So that's registering 2.04, 2, 2 inches. So let's see how much we can get before the bit completely clogs up. All right, that's another half inch. I believe I'm gonna to have to clean those chips out a little bit. There we go. Tell you what, I'm gonna put a little mark on the drill bit. I'll be back in just a second. I'm gonna mark the drill bit at a desired depth. Okay, it appears that if I if I get it all the flutes in there, which is only about an eighth inch more or about a quarter inch more to go, I will have gone past halfway. So hopefully by keeping it well lubed, those chips will find an easy path out. All right, that's got all the flutes, which is about three and three quarter inches. All right, so I'm gonna just turn it right straight. By drilling all the way through like this means I will have to put a, a plug on one end, which I didn't necessarily want to do, but that's the only way I could reach all the way through uh, to get all three of the implements that will be mounted on here. Uh, 
All right, I believe we're all the way through now. To actually tap that, not sure if I've got room for the Yes, I'll have room for the tap guide. And this new tap that I just picked up this morning, notice does not have a guide hole in the back of it. The old one does, so I'm going to start with that, with this old one, just to, uh, uh, again, just to be sure that we're starting it in there straight. All right, I believe that started in there. I do not have a taper reamer for uh, for pipe threads. So I realize it's going to be hard to run in there. All right, I never know how much to run, how deep to run these tapered taps in, but I did a little research online, and about the only thing that I could find in more than one place was something called the 12 thread rule. So I just counted 12 threads on here, and it looks like uh, that'll leave about four or five threads at the end there. So, I've got a little ways to go right here. That's only cut, starting a couple of threads. So I definitely need to ream or tap some more in there. But I'll get this tap down and uh, bring you back when I think we got it deep enough. All right, I've got the piece mounted horizontally in the uh, mill now, in the mill vise. I've located the center. Of course, on the Y, it stayed the same because uh, the fixed jaw stayed in the same position. I've located the center. And we're going to get us a little starter. Now, the two holes for the end ones are two and a half inches off this center. So. I'll just run the DRO down there, run the table down. And we'll go two and a half inches on the other side of center. All right, I'm not sure how much of the audio of that last segment that I lost, but uh, the battery went down in the cordless again, wireless microphone. So what I've done is drilled three holes in there, drilling down, touching the, uh, the other side. And I used the counter bore, countersink, to get a little bit of a start there, which makes the tap go so much easier. If 
you're going to do very much tapping, pipe tapping, uh, especially in something other than soft aluminum like this, I would highly recommend going ahead and getting a uh, tapered reamer to match the uh, NPT that you're that you're tapping for. In this case, quarter inch NPT. So I'm going to continue this until I uh, hit the bottom again. It's not every day you can hit the bottom. And there is the bottom. And you would not believe how much simpler this is by just putting that little bit of a countersink in the top up there before starting the uh, tap. As a matter of fact, I'm using the old tap now uh, just because it's got this hole in the end here for, for guiding the start. That gets a good three, three to four threads in before it actually starts getting tight, hand tight. There's the bottom once again. That center one, the pre the pre countersinking on that is plenty deep enough. For these other two, I'm gonna give them just another touch again. All right, I'm gonna head back to the workbench and do a quick little recap on this project. Okay, I think that about wraps up this little project. Um, I carried it out and put a coat of paint on it. And the paint's still a little bit tacky, but the wife just uh, messaged me and reminded me we got a sweet 16th birthday party to go to later, a little later, so uh, for my great niece. But uh, I want to go ahead and do the, uh, the wrap up for this. The three holes, of course this end down here is going to be plugged off. Now what this little project is going to be used for, or what this uh, little tool is going to be used for, is an upcoming project where I'm going to attempt to make three items that will mount up here. I'm going to give you a sneak peek, let me turn my back right quick, and I'm going to give you a sneak peek at, what one, at one of them. I plan to use this for a three-tone uh, air whistles. Uh, I don't have access to steam, don't mess with steam, but I'm going to make some air whistles. Uh, this is the uh, the mid-range here. There'll be one that's half again longer and one that's uh, half shorter than this one. This is six inch. There'll be a three and a, and a twelve. I'm sorry, I said half again, but there'll be a three inch, six inch, and a twelve. So just a simple little project today. to make an air manifold out of a piece of one by one uh, 6061 aluminum stock. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on a, another video real soon.